Hello, D&D &D tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play The Dark Queen of Kryn with me, Bloanculo. We are continuing our adventures into the Tome uh, with the Oracle and uh, all next to the town of Christophon or whatever the name is. It's kind of been a weird side quest, not really explained why we need to do a gigantic dungeon, to be honest. Some wizard told us to go visit the Oracle and learn something and blah blah blah. So then we came to this town and to visit the Oracle turned into a gigantic dungeon. It's a little bit, uh, just bonus kind of giant dungeon with less, uh, explanation. But, you know, it's fine, it's fine. This place has been interesting enough. So let's continue our story. This is the most recent secret room that was not really visible. And we will explore this place next. An aura of... Well, I was one step away from being able to rest without interruption. <laughs> An aura of peace fills the chamber coffins. The chamber. Coffins line the walls. Above each is a holy symbol. Thornum speaks up. These are the resting places of holy men. We should leave them alone. Oh, I thought I could rest here. Just leave these guys alone. It's fine. I, I, I saw rest and peace and figured, hey, we could just rest here. Uh, all right, since holy symbols, lots of, uh, okay. No, 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 we're not ransacking the good coffins right now. Holy symbols. More holy men. I'm surprised it's not Aaron, the knight. It's, 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 dwar it's the Thornum, the dwarf, that's telling us to leave these alone. He's not even a good cleric, he's a neutral cleric. Well, if you haven't seen uh, a battle against purple worms yet, I don't know who you've been watching, but we're just going to chew through these guys as quick as we can and just keep moving. Most of the random encounters down here have been relatively non-threatening. Oh, I guess, uh, did, uh, Cyberpunk come out today? Maybe that's where everyone is. Everyone's b busy playing the brand new RPG. Anyone in chat, uh, had a look at that game yet? Probably no purple worms in there, though. Alright, uh, battle over, a little bit of XP. Let's see here. Not looked at last yet. I thought it was... Maybe it wasn't today. It kept getting delayed, so I lost track of which day it was coming out on, to be honest. Maybe it's just on for pre-order today or something. As you enter the chamber, you are awed by its magnificence. Standing before you, gleaming in the torchlight, is a huge statue of a regal man. At the feet of the statue lies a huge sarcophagus, shattered and picked clean. Only a few bones remain of the ancient king of Christophon. That be it, this big room be come close to dying for. This guy's gonna get killed by something after stealing some goodies. He's gonna he's gonna try to nick something like a bad monkey in a tome of the dead. Alright. Just a random door into a cave. Should I have uh, maybe searched this room? find a tiny piece of statue. Good thing I searched the room. You have found a piece of the oracle. As you take the second piece, the whispery voice recites a verse. Erdegerd writes it down for you. A second, we have a Twitch bot. I'm trying to click on it. <laughs> My window's not cooperating. The Twitch bots are trying real hard. All right, another band, one of a million banned bots. All right, <clears throat> find the realm where Tremor is lord. Choose the right present to add to his hoard. Tremor is lord, probably Umber Hulks, right. They're known for being kind of earth shaky. Shattered sarcophagus. 
All right, well, we found what I sh was... I'm glad we found in there. Cool. Let's continue through the caves. Looks like there's a whole bunch of secret doors in here that you might not have noticed. I'm going to ignore all the secrets for the moment, but just have a look at gold box. Also, there's like one-way doors, maybe. This is a great place. It's surrounded by worms again. Maybe I should throw some uh, fireballs on these ones. We'll just fight our way through naturally, but... I think the time you save by casting fireball is lost by spending the time menuing to fireball and then trying to uh, restore spell charges later on. Unless you get... Unless you kill a lot of enemies. And just hitting like two or three... Uh, Speed run time, basically. Uh. Uh. Alright, the worms are gone. Another pack of worms dealt with. Usually there is a limit on how many random encounters you get to. So once we win enough of these fights, they'll probably stop. So I didn't go this way yet. So it looks like that's all of the normal routes. Other than secrets. Oh, maybe I missed that one. Okay, never mind. The passage is dark and smells of rusted, rotted carry-on. I guess it's easy to miss the side openings, whereas in normal dungeons you can generally see left to right a little bit as you walk forward. Tiny bats flutter around you and then fly away. Just tiny bats. Something be wrong here. Been free to go too long. Where be all the monsters? Something that eats monsters. Better save it. Should buff up, cast bless and prayer and all that. Right before a giant monster room. This one, this is where the monster attacks. No. That one for sure. Okay, this is too giant of a room. I know, we very, very rarely take the seconds to uh to buff up, but let's buff up. Prayer. Now, I don't know if monsters are going to be evil necessarily, but we'll go bless and prayer at the very least. Alright. At least we've got the basic the basic protections. Oh, protection from evil might have been useful. Suddenly, monsters step out of the shadows. A vampire calmly walks up to you. He extends his hand, and you see a piece of the oracle nestled in his palm. Welcome, is this what you came for? I hope it wasn't too hard gathering the pieces we scattered around for you to find. I don't think you'll be needing this one. He tosses it to the floor. I can predict your future quite easily. You are going to die. The vampire snapped his fingers and the undead attack. Well, at least we have some spells. Alright, so, what do you, how do you think this is going to go? That's a lot of vampires. Vampire mages, clerics, normal vampires, some specters. Everything here can drain levels, which was kind of annoying. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. My turning ability! I thought we'd for sure be able to turn a couple of them. Like the specters, at least. Well, uh... Uh, change of plans. Fireballs away. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Please. Another vampire is casting something. That one. Um... Maybe? Oh, you know what? He's got... Because he's a ranger, he's got, uh... Magic missile. No magic! Should we try turn undead again? Work, ding you! So apparently Turn Undead is busted in this room. Usually uh, Turning Undead has been pretty successful, but... Alright. Let's try to finish this one off. And, uh... Sheesh. That... Okay, level drain begins. <laughs> Great blade barrier. Very useful. It actually worked pretty well. Well, it's a good thing we saved because we're... Yeah, we're probably going to have to reload this fight. Because now we know Turn Undead doesn't even work here. I don't, I don't know why it's so unsuccessful, but... This room seems to be... Protected from, un, from, from Turn Undead. I mean, the fireballs are pretty good, but, ugh, 22 damage. Even that was garbage. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, we're, we're in a pretty bad spot here. Fireballs enough, they won't be able to cast much magic. But they can still physically attack us and drain all our levels, you know. One more turn, come on. Yeah, our turning ability has definitely been nerfed in this room. Pff, disintegrate. Yeah, that's not very nice, is it? Uh, I'm glad we managed to dodge it. <laughs> Blame Gary Gygax, probably. All the oldest, worst mechanics are his own fault. working super efficiently. They just have too much HP here. Okay, let me just mouse over some of these enemies. What are we looking at? So, a vampire cleric is... Oh, see, they start with everything. They've got bless, drain two levels, fire resistance, cold immunity, electric immunity, fear immunity, gaze immunity, immune to non-magic weapons, and starting with protection from good. So, they all started with perfect buffs, or at least a lot of buffs. So I was looking at a cleric that had all that. So yeah, they've got... Tons of stuff. Fire resistance, immunity to other elements, blessed. 
Then mages, they get mirror image, fire shield. It's a good thing I haven't tried to attack one of these yet. Mirror image, fire shield, cold, immune to cold. So they take double damage from cold, but they're immune to it. Immune to electricity and cold, half damage from fire, or zero if they pass saving throw. What about the normal vampires? There are a couple regular vampires. Uh, they get immune to cold, electricity, drain levels. That's it. So, them always starting with, like, super buffs is pretty rude. Oh, jeesh. Alright, well, uh... Vampire mages, huh? Immune to ice, immune to lightning. Might be immune to fire. Don't breathe. Can hit him with a magic missile. Let's try to disintegrate. Got one. At least we got one there. Two good cleric kills. Who is that? Somebody's trying to cast magic. Maybe that one that we can't even target? This is where we need a blade barrier if I had one ready to go. And the vampires are praying. That should stop those two from casting. Might even just kill them. Alright, good. Blade Barrier does work really well on these high level casters. I'm curious if you can just stone them. <laughs> We've got some pretty cool weapons to kill them, to be honest. Like, pretty cool spells. That, that was pretty good. We disintegrated one, we turned one to stone. Got some stuck inside of a uh, blade barrier. Oh, that's right. Don't attack the mages in melee. Oh, I... Well, now we get to reload anyway, because... Fire Shield needs... Fire Shield... Fire Shield 100% needs some sort of in-game animation. Because you would never even know it exists without something like Goldbox Companion, and you just run over there and smack something, thinking it was just a regular vampire. And you just kill yourself instantly. Alright. Cool. Well, now we get to reload. Because we can't resurrect Pixel. Of course it was the elf that's un unresable. Uh, whatever, at this point we just need to end the battle. I don't know how we walked through the blade barrier, took no damage. Don't ask. Okay, so we're gonna try this one again a little bit more serious like. We'll uh, read all this next time. Camp, load. Asap. Okay, so uh, if we're gonna go into a death party. Let's turn on our uh, spell effects here for you guys. So we've currently got nothing yet. 
So definitely bless up, right? Everyone is blessed for six turns. Definitely prayer. Everyone gets prayer. Everyone gets protection from evil because they are definitely evil. So it's going to take a second to put that on everybody. There is protection from evil 10 radius, but it doesn't work if you're not standing adjacent to somebody. So just regular protection from evil is kind of easier to handle. It's also a low lever spell, so we get lots of casts of it. But yeah, we're going to take this fight a little bit more serious, I think. Heck, I'll even cast it on Celias, because whatever. Okay, so we've got Protection from Evil on everyone for quite a long time. Prayer for a little while, and Bless only lasts a very short amount of time. Uh, we could put Resist Fire on people. They, I saw them cast Lightning Bolt. I didn't see them cast any Fireballs, I don't think. Any other thing else they did? I, we, it would be, we're not going to sit here and rest up to restore all of our spell charges. It would be great if we had a bunch of blade barriers, but I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is pre-buffing. We could put, like, Globe of Invulnerability on our mages at, at the end here. We could haste up. Maybe we should just haste up. I don't think they're technically summoned creatures, although they're evil, but Dispel Evil only works on certain types. Oh, Fire Touch. I always forget to put this on people. They're, they won't all take bonus damage from it, but they'll take some. I'm going to finally use some Fire Touch as a buff. One, two, three, four... We'll put one more on uh, Drow as well. If I have any. Maybe that's all I got. Alright, well we got we got a few fire touches up. Uh, fire shield? I don't know. I don't think we need fire shield. Is there any other useful defensive buffs we can throw on? Oh, I know. There's some very simple ones that work on the mages. Let's throw... Oh, well, we can also enlarge. Don't forget. <laughs> we'll put mirror image on any of the mages that know that spell. Because it makes it much harder for them to get targeted. I think... For some reason, white mages aren't allowed to learn that one, maybe? Or I just didn't memorize it. But yeah, mirror image is pretty good. I think Thornum even has it now, thanks to his ranger. Yeah. Okay, so mirror image is pretty good. Uh, anything else? Yeah, we can do a couple enlargements. Everyone except Aaron could, could get some benefit from that. That's in melee, anyway. All the buffs. We, we don't get to do this very often, so now that we know there's a big tough boss fight. Let's uh, fully prepare. Alright, let's have a look at some of our uh, newly buffed up guys. 22 strength. 22 strength. 22 strength. 22 strength. They've got fire touch. They've got bless prayer, protection from evil. Any other spells that we might have? Haste, of course. I mean, iron skin, I don't even know exactly what that's going to do, if anything. But it's a self cast, so might as well throw it on, I guess. I'm still not sure if it works. Any of my red mages should have it, if I memorized one. Uh, shield only works if you don't have a shield equipped, which everyone does. It does protect you from magic missiles, I guess, but I didn't see them use any magic missiles. If you had blink, you could put a blink on. Obviously, Fire Shield would reflect damage. 
Sure. Why not? Uh, it's self-target only, so... Cold protects from fire. Cold. It means we could cast fireballs on ourselves, practically. Cold. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't get Fire Shield on Aaron or Thorinum. Other than Haste, is there any other spells that would help us? That might be it. Is there any... I don't think there's any... I'm, I'm always kind of... Well, we can cast Bark Skin, but it won't do anything. Um, I, I don't think it will. I'm always kind of... I Like, in 1st Edition, I don't think there's enough clerical buff spells. I think they need a more powerful bless or something. So AC minus 10. Just cast on yourself. Yeah, that didn't actually do anything. I'm not really surprised. Uh, resist cold... There's just not really any buffing spells other than Prayer and Bless and Protection from Evil. I get a second like three, but it's not very much. I don't really count Dispel Evil. Too situational. Okay, whatever this is, we're skipping that one. Well, I think that might be all the buffing we need to do other than Haste. Sure. As prepared as possible. So many spells. Everyone's getting really old during this campaign. We're all aging. And only Tim, but Tim is special because he has global invulnerability. He can have that. You have to cast that last or you can't buff him. Alright, what do we got? Boots, Blessed, Prayer, Protect from Evil, Fire Touch, Haste. Some people have duplication or enlarge or bark skin. Um, lots of fun stuff. <laughs> so many spells, it goes off screen. You, I have to turn that off because you can see the big list above everybody's head. It's uh, taking over their um, over the over the screen there. But yeah, we got lots of buffs. Let's uh, save because we can still get level drained and do this. All right. This time. I slept for eight years in the dungeon. Oops. Okay. This is it, folks. We're all ready to go. Ready and raring. So, Rob's up first. What's we? What do we got for Rob? Delayed Blast Fireball? Probably. Meteor Swarm? Maybe. Sounds like fun. It's probably the wrong spell, but it should be fun. How come we're not getting good initiative? We were hasted! We've already been drained once. We didn't get, like, any actions before they immediately started doing all their nonsense. We had one person start to cast a spell and then they didn't even finish. Someone's trying to cast magic, I just don't know who it is. I guess it must be the one we can't see. This guy. Uh, well, good start, good start. All those buffs. Fine, fireballs. Everyone gets a friggin' fireball. You get a fireball, and you get a fireball. I 
I hate Fire Shield. That's the worst spell. Aaron just took 160 damage in a single round. I, I should have put protection from fire. I should have cast resist fire on Aaron and Thornum, because it would probably reduce the incoming fire damage from fire shield. But there's like there's nothing else Aaron can do. His job is to hit things. And he was in melee with the mage, so if he'd moved, they would have got a back attack and level drained him. Ah, oh. these these and dead man. So Tim got level drained already. So he can't cast magic on turn one. That was nice. So the clerics... We just chopped the clerics down. Saving the right side for the meteor swarm. That's, that's the plan. Alright, this better do something awesome. This, this spell is so bad. It's the it's the NES power glove of uh, level 9 spells. So right in the middle of all of them. It spreads out, right? Thirteen damage to one. Five damage to another. Level 9 spell, 8 damage total. Or 18 damage total. Thornum was saved by Mirror Image from a Disintegrate. So was Rob. That spell works. This is not any better. This is like the same thing exactly as what happened last time, even though we've been all our buffs. Ugh. If we move, we get level drained. If we stay here, we get killed by by razors. Aaron can't do anything because he's beside a mage again. I guess he does have one thing he can do, to be fair. this up this way. Can't quite. Mm, I wanted to hit this mage, but I can't quite pull it off. Alright, well, hit what you can. Oh, 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 no, I hit the specter. Just not the mage. Alright, so this... It's actually more important to hit the mage than the big group. Uh, how do I deal with this other mage? Oh, I didn't mean to end! I was just exiting! Well. Had to take the hit, right? At least I healed him up in between. But now Pixel can get out of the way. Can fully get out of the way. I'm just gonna keep Pixel out of melee because Pixel's really hurting.
But we still haven't really dealt with that mage. Looks like uh, Blade Bear really would be the best option here. Well, this worked last time. Try again. So these are just clerics. So I disrespect them. We just smack them. Got him. All right, we're we're good. Theoretically, we've restored Tim's levels, maybe. How are you looking? No, he still he still has levels. He must have had like two levels drained. Try again. There, now his levels are back. Pixel. Looks like we might be able to come out of this with uh, no deaths. Okay, Pixel's uh, mirror image saved him. Thornum's just gonna... This guy's almost dead. Let's just see if we can flame strike him. No, no, you've got a magic missile. This might do it. One level drain, but we managed to get rid of that with scrolls, which we can just buy more of if we want. Whew. And a couple heal spells, a whole bunch of buffs. Victory is ours. That fight was garbage. <laughs> 15,000 experience isn't even all that much for such a crazy fight. All we get is some, uh, some gems, basically. found a piece of the oracle after killing a million vampires. As you recover the third piece, the voice of the oracle relates a prophecy. Erdegerdegerg writes it down in 34. Friends, a dragon you'll meet, more mighty than all, to stop its rampage. Seek help from three friends. The black robe, the winged ones, and also the small. I don't like this. If we're really fighting a dragon, shouldn't we just be getting more dragon lances? If we had six dragon lances, surely we'd be fine. Haste plus dragon lance equals dead dragon. Alright, save game. Alright, good fun, good fun. Vampires are defeated. No teleporter yet. Warning! Do not enter! Is scrawled in blood on the floor before the teleporter. No. Now that might have been a message for the vampires. Safe. Right? That's like, this leads to a holy land where vampires die. Leads me somewhere. Drow finds a trap and leads everyone around it. Well, I mean, we're no longer in vampire land. Ah, as you step on the slab, it glows light and lights begin to dance in the air. Soon you can make out shapes. They're hydras. And gorgons. Oh my. So maybe I should have uh, gone the other way. Well, let's just fight our way through.
We've never had problems from Gorgons before, have we? Okay, we got the left side dealt with. Don't you breathe on us. I want to deal with all the ones that are kind of coming around the edge while one person holds off the rest. And, you know, now we're good. The thing with Gorgons is they actually die pretty quickly. Not a ton of HP for our level. It looks like this fight's all but over. It's kind of a shame that Hydras are so weak now. Hydras have always been one of those cool sort of boss enemies and now they're relegated to kind of garbage mobs. You know, the Herculean tale where the Hydra is like a pretty special fight. Okay, there's a secret here, by the way. Uh, some eyes. Cool. Just take those. Just picked up some eyes. Get some experience for picking up some eyeballs. You hear something growl behind you. You turn around, but there's nothing there because teleporting problems. There's a treasure chest here with a rusted lock. It looks like a rusted key will open it. We have one of those. Good luck, Jarrell. We got a girdle! Here we go, everybody. <laughs> uh, we are officially out of inventory space, I think. That was everybody, right? Yeah, we have to drop something now. Uh, if we want to take this girdle, we're leaving something behind. So you know what? We're never going to use uh, this elixir of youth after all these years we're getting older. Uh, impulsion of invisibility is just garbage. Throw that away. We're never going to use that. We can cast mass invisibility if we really want it. Throw that away. Alright, take that girdle. Let's see how Pixel looks with a new girdle. Actually... Little did you know, uh, Enlarge actually lasts quite a long time. We are still under the effects of uh, Protection from Evil and Enlarge for another 78 turns. But if you weren't enlarged, now you'd be even larger. So we've got ourselves another Girdle of Giant Strength. So we can have two characters with 23 strength now. Not too bad. So I suppose we'll prioritize Aaron and Thorinum. Right? Uh, that means we don't need these gauntlets anymore. Just throw those away. <laughs> and uh, it's just I have no inventory space. Alright, there we go. It's still better than an enlarged spell. But we are at the point where you could probably enlarge almost every battle because it's, it lasts so long. It's one of the nice buffs that lasts, well, a long time. Well, enjoy that mighty, mighty strength there, Thorinum. That's a lot of damage, a lot of Thacko. Looks like most of these pillars have a secret entrance. Even if it's generally just gems. So this is a fun place. You hear something growl, but you just got magicked. So lots of teleporters. Yeah. 
as you step on this slab. Makes sense to kill the Gorgons first, right? Oops, that was a mistake. All right, let's just uh, start working through these Hydras. Hope you enjoy Hydra battles times five, times six. Celius. Well, if he dies, he dies. What do we care about that punk? See, no backstab, just attack from behind. The game lets you figure out how to do a back attack on large enemies, but they still don't count for backstab, sadly. I think they should. Keeps your th it would keep your thief a lot more interesting in these games with n almost no human-sized enemies that aren't just susceptible to being fireballed. Okay. Big fight. Big victory. Just an empty one? While searching, the living dead find you. Ha. Huh. Well, you know, zombies and specters, right? Don't expect much from that fight. Okay, so that was a uh, just a zombie crypt. Sure. You hear something growl, but it probably just means you've been teleported again. Well, this place is uh got one trick. Hope you enjoy this one trick. Because that's all you get. We're going to start speeding these up a little bit even more so. Just because we're fighting the same battle. So if you have a hard time following along with the numbers. Uh, sorry. It's not that much faster but it is a bit faster. Well, he's dead. Tell you what, uh... Power words never work! Now, I guess maybe it's 100 HP? I thought it was 120 in this game, but... Would have been a great time for Power Word to do something. <laughs> there, we'll bandage him. Any other stupid spells that won't work? something about Hydras I didn't understand? Uh, hold a second. Spell reflection?
doesn't say anything about that in the monster manual. They're supposed to have 72 HP. They might have more because I upped the difficulty. <laughs> Maybe when you up the difficulty, they get new abilities. Wow. That's a thing. I never thought of that, but they, they definitely have more than 72 hit points, don't they? I should never have upgraded the difficulty. It's kind of fun, but... Someone's gonna have to go help out Rob, though. Those sexy legs aren't gonna save themselves. Especially when you've been blinded. Okay. We might be learning new things. I mean, I could change the difficulty back down. Never! Um, heal, Rob. That should get rid of any blindness. And also, yeah. Blindness recovered and also healed. Let's uh, make sure we save. And we'll keep going here. I did get myself into this trap, so now I need to get myself out. This one doesn't have an entrance. Thanks, Drow, for finding a trap. Okay, we found a teleporter. It kind of seems like you can't get to the outside of this room. Just has that look, you know? Just an infinite loop room. Are we inside a bag of holding? Okay, that just took us right back to the uh, center. I think we might be able to rest up here, so... Fix button, rest button. And then the way we actually rest these days is to go faster. Because it saves us a lot of time. And then speed slower to three. Alright, well we're all recharged after all that. Um... This will take me back to the vampire. It's gonna take a while. This will take us all the way back to the vampire area. Secret door. This is where we started our episode. Oh, look, there's something I missed here. There is a teleporter here. It is shattered and lifeless. A sign above it reads Maze of Columns. Oh, that's probably where we went. Maze of Columns? By that be a legend? They say big treasure in there. But those that go in don't come out. Okay, well, this one's broken, but we found the thing already. That's kind of funny. Yeah, we did that. Oh, Umber Hulks. Easy. Back to Vampire Cave. Although there was a... There looks like there's a secret here, but I can't get in. So maybe Goldbox Companion's not always right. Or maybe I need to search it. Sometimes. Maybe it opens up only after you've searched it. Just following the map here.
Okay, so there was two teleporters here. One said danger, one said nothing. This is the other one. I'm hoping it takes us something different. Nope, just back to the beginning. So, are we... Are we done? I don't feel done. We got a golden circlet from the Lich last episode, or a couple episodes ago. Hey there, Aaron. I definitely feel like we missed something. Somewhere. Hmm. Well, this is the time, as we're getting to the end of the episode and I want to end this place, that we pull out the manual and we try to skim through and find out what I missed, if there's a hidden passage somewhere or what. So the tomes, obviously, is a pretty significant area. Um... Just a little bit lost. There's too many secret doorways and teleporters. So, you know, this is where we started. We did all of this area. And then we've got 17, 12, 34, and 30 for teleporters. And then 29 leads us to the crypt floor. Uh, this was the mimic room. And then tax collector. Oh, tax collector was that way. This was the quest for the heart key. We did that. Oh, that was the... 25... Yeah, I think this was the tax collector room. This was just a dead-end trap. This was our pillar maze. Which, assumedly, we're done. This was the Lich's, uh... Adventure. Circlet of gold, we need at 46. So if I ever found 46? Wherever this is. Ladder. I feel like I may have missed a way down here. This was... Um, yeah, this is the entrance to the vampire area. Teleporter 8, teleporter 54. So we came in, did that. So how do we get to this part? Forty-four, forty-five. <laughs> I obviously missed something somewhere. Oh. So in the main hall here, I'm sure I am positive I've stepped on this tile before because we've mapped it out, but maybe I never searched for a trap door on this specific tile. Wow. You would have just had to put search on and then revisit the entire area until you found the right tile. So we never found this area. All right. Should be the last one, I think. Let's just save it. Thanks, uh, Clue Book, for saving me a half hour of wandering. Sorry, future tubers, you don't get the legit blind experience here as I waste an entire episode bumping into every wall. You hear Pitiful crying. A ghostly figure stands before you. Help me! It cries. Release me from this hell! Do you have the circlet of gold? Yeah, here you go. Do you give it to him? Sure. I don't want it. Congratulations, you get some experience. Oh, the circlet! Thank you! May strangers! May the gods bless you forever! Goodbye! As he fades away, his armor, sword, and longbow, and a pouch clatter to the ground. Well, that's all great and all, but how, where am I gonna where am I gonna store this? Uh, we really don't have a lot of inventory space. Let's detect magic. I can't take anything unless it's magical. It's not magical. It's a fine longbow, but uh, D 
you think fine lets you use your strength modifier on it? Because that's the only way it would be better than a plus three longbow. So let's do a little math here. Our regular bow, plus three that is, has a Thacko of zero and does 1d6 plus four damage. The plus four comes from the arrows plus one and the bow, the, the longbow plus three, right? So we're getting one damage from the arrows and then three damage from the bow. Right now we're punching. But each arrow is just a 1d6 plus one plus your bow modifier. Yep. So the fine bow might not be magical, but you get your strength modifier on it, which means someone who's got uh, 23 strength would really enjoy that bow. So someone like Aaron, who has no inventory space. I don't think we have any inventory space at all. We need to drop something. Uh, you've got really good arrows, so let's just drop some of these not quite as good arrows. <laughs> and then I just move something down to Tim from here, like these random eyes. Here, Tim, hold those. We've only got one inventory spot free in the entire party. Then we can move this bow up to Aaron. Then Aaron, with his mighty fine strength, I want to... Do a little bit of math here again, just comparison. So again, you know, he's really good. Uh, minus three Thacko and 1d6 plus four is crazy powerful. Uh, but... Minus five Thacko and each arrow does 13 to 19 damage. That's actually pretty significant. Um... So fine longbows are great. Yeah, no problem with that. We had something like that back in the uh, Pool of Radiant series. At some point we could buy these and we bought them for everybody. Because uh, adding your strength modifier to your bow, your arrows, is uh, pretty wild actually. That's just so much more damage than your average arrow. So, cool. At least we got something. And uh, these things are not magical because we just cast Detect Magic, right? Yeah, uh, everything has a star by it that's magical. If only you could get a fine longbow plus a fine longbow plus two or three or something. Okay, enjoy that ridiculous armor class. Leave the garbage behind. As you look through the items, you find a tiny statue. As you find a piece of the oracle, you pick it up, the forced piece. The voice warns of new enemies. Erdegerd writes it down for you guys. You followed the monsters that landed ashore. They killed and they burned, but also found friends. In the men who bring fact to the dire Sharkman's lore. These rhymes are not very good. So this must be giving us our, um, you know, our quests, essentially, what we need to do to save the lands, but this is not very well explained. Okay. Are we done now? That's four. Can we go talk to the statue? Is that really all we were supposed to do is just get the random... You should probably go everywhere on the map and explore things. That seems rather lackluster. Uh... Is there anything else in here? I mean, obviously we did this circlet of gold. I guess that's it. This seemed like a... Like, what's... What's the... I, 
I hope this triggers the end of the dragon attack outside, because this... Like, nothing happened. There was no oracle that talked to us. So, the party encounters thieves, monsters, and undead in their quest for the Oracle of Tengur. The Oracle is a tiny statue that's been broken into five pieces. We've only found four. Urgh. Each piece gives the party a new clue or hint. Yay. Eventually, it becomes clear that the Oracle has been shattered in an attempt to lure unsuspecting adventurers deep into a lair of vampires. Okay, where's the one I missed then? Because I must have missed one. Because I'm pretty sure we said four, right? So I know I did the heart-shaped key into the Oracle of Tengur, right? We did that one. We got one. I'm pretty sure we got one from the Lich, right? Oh. No. We missed this one. So I think this one is back in the uh, Lich's area. After you killed the spiders, you had to search the ground. Randomly, basically. Okay, we'll go back and check that then. Uh, that was one of the teleporters. One of these two, I think. 35. Probably 34 to 35. Yeah. And then up to here. Oh, yeah, this, this is one of those you'd never... Like, I don't know if I... Like, if I was playing this as a kid without any kind of auto map or guide, there's no way I would have ever finished this game. It's just way too much random searching. So this was the spider one. Search. There doesn't appear to be anything valuable, <laughs> but there is something caught in one of the spider webs. You pull the small clump from the web. The sticky fiber tears easily and you discover a small piece of a statue. That is it. You found the final piece of the oracle. When you take the final piece, the whispers describe dire events. Thankfully, Erdegerd writes it down for you in the journal that you've had all this time because Erdegerd is actually a time traveler and wrote these down for you in advance. So you didn't have to do any of these quests if you just read your manual ahead of time. Uh, not that one, sorry. This one. Another. I see flames and an egg and a crack and a head. Then another and another and another and more. She rises up, the queen of the dark. She conquers and rules, leaving only the dead. Like, in a game called The Dark Queen of Kryn, having an oracle tell you that a dark queen will rise and conquer the lands of Kryn... Like, thanks. Did I have to do this whole dungeon for you to tell me that there's a bad guy? <laughs> there's a villain in this game. <laughs> She's she, her name's Dakisi. You've already kind of heard of her. <laughs> She's re this should have just linked back up to Captain Daynor and Chrysia. because we already know. Basically, Takisi is looking through Chrysia, who's been charmed, and looking at us through Daenor. We've already done that. So we know that she's, like, gaining strength. She's, like, chained up somewhere, right? Like, that was part of that vision that we saw ourselves. This stuff is, like, even less helpful than what we've already learned. <laughs> that is even more helpful, though. Thank you. Um, alright. Congratulations. Enjoy that experience. Please let me out. Uh, we have to get out going this way. So this is where the teleporter out is. Yes, I'll check the main statue one last time. I get the feeling that this statue is just a trick and... Nice. We haven't fought a lot of zombies yet, to be honest. Looks like they take half damage from not, uh, un not blunt. Or they just take half damage in general. Anyway, goodbye, mummies. Your mummy never loved you anyway. Okay. <laughs> 
If only every battle went that quick. Okay, so we're just leaving this place. We need to end this episode. I just want to see if we can get back to the town and get a level up. Legitimately. I mean, I could level up anytime I want, technically, but you know what I mean. And then maybe Celius will leave us. One can only hope. Good thing I've got an auto map to make this go quick. It's such a windy place. This would be just a nightmare to go through without a map. Hooray, we won before the music was over. That's been my goal all along. Alright. Yes, I want to leave the tome. I would like to get off this wild ride. Aaron feels that the Oracle should be left behind, where some other worthy adventurer can benefit from it. Do you agree? No? The, the Oracle is a trap designed to kill people. If we leave it here, the vampires are just going to show up and kill more unsuspecting adventurers. It also helped us... No. I... Fine. Just throw it in the corner. As you reach to retrieve the oracle from your pack, you realize it's missing. You notice Celius quietly moving to the door and try to stop him. Ah ha! You got me, friends! I done a little bit of fishing, but see? We got something to settle. I'd be fitting for ye, but... Get nothing in return. Fighting for ye, but getting nothing in return. I be fair, but now... Now ye be fair. A very thin price I can get for him. The thief pulls out the pieces of his tiny statue and clutches them in his fist. This be fair, don't go stopping me. Suddenly, Celia screams as the oracle grows red hot and explodes. I mean... He has no one to blame but himself. God damn, Maggie! Always gets me. I be gone, my friends. It be fun, but time for me to go. The thief skillfully ducks by you and escapes out the door. Sure. We just watch him go. We don't even try. We just, we're just we just standing here watching him get exploded by the oracle. And he just like... He's trying to slink out behind us as if we don't even see him. And just... We're like, yeah, see ya. Nice to meet you. What was your name again? Beep? Yes. Oh, for hooray, everyone! The fire is gone. We're no longer unable to do anything outside in this mighty, mighty town. The People's Temple. So, um, I'm sure there's lots of nice things out here that we need to find. Number one would be a, uh, what was that? You catch a something. I would like to find a training hall and a shop. And then a vault. There's supposed to be a vault. I've been promised a place to store my items. The Bullish Gourmet. Shackles by Shark... Sharishi? No. The Watering Trough. Minotaur Guards. I just... Don't know where to go. This is just some random villager. Hello friends, have you found a, have you heard of a training hall in your town? Hooves polished does not sound like a training hall to me. Yeah, we've been to Cal's fashion before. Should, someone should put up some signs or a map. It's the worst town I've ever been in. I say that. I've done worse. Tenderloin Lodge. <laughs> That's good. You catch a whiff of something foul smelling. Oh, a group of thugs are seated around a table dividing up some treasure. Ah, stash the loot! A bearded man in armor grunts. Ah, they're spies from Caston, and they've walked right in the wrong house. <laughs> oh, 
I love this game so much. It's not even going to work. All right, future tubers, we're gonna take a break here. Um, next episode, I'll figure out how far back I am reloading this game from. Um, I was just trying to find somewhere to wrap up the episode, you see, and then the game decides to pull a real good prank on us, and uh, boy, that was just fun. Uh, I'll catch back up to wherever we were off camera. And then uh, start next episode with a level up party, I guess. <sighs> Thanks for watching, future tubers. Hope you've enjoyed. I uh, I don't like dark wizards that come with uh, seven or eight buffs, and then uh, you know round one delayed last fireball everyone before they even blink. Even though we surprised them, they surprised us. You know. Anyway. All that aside, I need to end this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll redo whatever I need to do, and I'll see you next episode for some more <laughs> Dark Queen of Grace.